I'm excited to share with you some perspectives today on video games, cognitive enhancement, and the future of how we can improve our, our brains. I just want to start with the goal. This is a goal that has driven me for 20 years in this field, to improve quality of life. It may seem like an obvious one for someone coming from the medical world, but I can tell you that this is not a goal that I share with all my colleagues. There are, there are many people that are working on extending the length of our life, our lifespan. We already know that we pay a great burden for that. We have neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's that are reaching academic, epidemic proportions as we live longer and longer. So I think the focus should be on living a better life. And that's what I'm here to tell you today, an approach to do that. So one way is that we can develop a system, an approach to enhance cognition, both in healthy and impaired individuals. By cognition, I mean how our brain processes information in its most fundamental ways, from attention, perception, memory, decision making. If you want to change something, the approach you take is a closed loop system, meaning that when you do something, you record as rapidly as possible with as low latency what the effect was, and then you reapply based on that data and you wind up with a, a feedback loop. This is how you change a system. This is exactly the opposite of how our current medical system works. We give you this pill with all these associated problems that I just described. You go home with it. You come back months later with a subjective impression about what changed in terms of effects and side effects. And then a decision's made, not on empirical data, about how to go up or down on the dose, the adjustments made, and months pass again. We have long latency and a lack of quantitative data that's used in that feedback. This is really just not good enough. This is not where we should find ourselves in 2014 in the way that we treat this wide range of diseases that inflict so many people. And so one of my goals and the goal of my lab is to create a new system. And we've been working on this for 10 years now, and we know that we have a long road in front of us. But I want to show you now an example of what we've done and where we're heading to create a system that's targeted, personalized, multimodal, and closed loop. If not to replace our current system, but to supplement it and make it much more effective. I want to pause now and mention another one that many of you might be fond of, video games. We know that video games are now a global phenomena. They, the average age of a gamer, gamer is now in the late 30s. We know that they are more gender equal than they've ever been. I would propose that they are the most powerful form of media, given that they're both interactive and they're fun. And we know that they have a strong influence on behavior. That's obvious. The question is, can they actually have a positive impact? Can we think about video games beyond their role in entertainment? I want to read to you a quote from Time magazine from 1982. Video games are just another manifestation of human mania, our endearing quality of going relentlessly after absolutely pointless goals. So there has been the view that video games really end right there. They're fun, but that's the most that they're ever going to do. There's now an emergence of really interesting data, not done by my own lab, but by others, showing that commercial video games, like action video games, first-person shooters, have been found to have an, an impact on improving cognitive control abilities in young adults that play them. So attentional allocation, uh, resistance of distraction, working memory, task switching. And so there's this budding pool of literature that leads us to believe that these type of rich, immersive, fun, interactive environments might be a tool that we can shape how a brain functions. And so five years ago, I asked my lab the question, can we develop a custom designed video game built from scratch to enhance cognitive abilities in older adults? So we spent years understanding what changes in the brain of older adults, so we knew what the target was. We understood the engine in terms of plasticity and the way to harness it, at least our idea, was to use the mechanics of video games. And so I met with friends of mine that worked at uh, LucasArts at the time, and I went to them with this idea of a video game to challenge older adults in the domain that they're most weak in, which is their ability to deal with multiple streams of information in a distracting environment. And this is what grew out of our research. And they told me that they'd be delighted to work with us. After spending their entire careers teaching teenagers how to kill aliens, they thought that this might be uh, you know, a, a bridge to something different for them. And um, I found that with uh, supplying some sushi and beer, you can get triple A game developer, artists, video game programmers, developers uh, in your lab to work with your postdocs and students and actually create something really new. I'm gonna show you an early version of this game, just, just try to talk through to you what we built. 
So what's happening in this game is that you're trying to keep your car on a road that's winding in all directions, going up hills, using a joystick, and then these signs appear. And you have to respond as rapidly as possible and as accurately only to the target sign, so a green circle, not a red circle, not a green pentagon, which is very hard to not respond to, especially as you get older. And so you play these two tasks at the same time. One of the secret ingredients here, or special ingredients, that's not secret since we certainly tell everyone about it, is that these tasks are adaptive, meaning that as you perform better, the game detects that and adjusts the challenge level to be appropriate for you. So keeping you right in the sweet spot, or what our game developers would call a flow state. Essentially, not making it too hard that it's frustrating or too easy that it's boring. And so the game is constantly challenging, and the reward cycles are integrated into this adaptivity so that you only really level up in this game if both of those skills get better, so that you can't trade off between them. And what we do is we built a version of this game that you could play it inside an MRI scanner. You could play with an EEG cap so we could see what's going on in your brain while you interact with this game. And so we look at what happens in your brain while you play it beforehand, as well as a whole other battery of cognitive skills that we test. Then you take a laptop home, and I say you, this is older adults, 60 to 80 year olds that are involved in this experiment. They play it for a month, one hour a day, three days a week for a month, so uh, 12, 12 hours of gameplay. Then they come back into the lab and we see what has changed in their ability to play the game, what's changed in their brain, and what's changed in terms of other cognitive abilities. So I'm just gonna show you a quick snapshot of some of the data. The first thing is that we could use the game as a diagnostic. So that red line at the top means 0% means that you perform as well doing that sign task when you do it alone as when you're also driving. So that means you multitask perfectly. You don't suffer what we call a cost. And if you ask most 20 year olds what their cost would be, they pretty uniformly say zero. But we know that's not the case. So if we look at 20 year olds on the axis over here on the x axis, we have decades of life. 20 year olds drop 27% in performance on the sign task when they drive concurrently. We already know that older adults are gonna suffer a decrement because we've been studying that for years. What happens in between? What happens as we move across the lifespan? This is what happens. It's not that you retain these abilities until you're 69 years old and then plummet in one tragic year. You actually change every year of your life. As a matter of fact, the biggest difference between two adjacent decades are between 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds. What's not part of the paper, but part of our new data is if you look at eight to 12 year olds that play the game, this is what you see in terms of their abilities, functioning at around the 40 year old level. So it's a skill that builds up and then declines linearly across life. So I'm gonna pull this up and I'm gonna talk over this video, point out some features. So you'll see that the tasks are the same. There is a, the sign task and the driving task like you saw before, but now it's in a much richer, immersive, fluid environment using the accelerometer on the iPad as opposed to a joystick in this case. Lots of reward cycles figured into this game. Again, you only level up and get the big rewards if both skills go up. So that's the real trick is preserving what we call the cognitive engine behind it but bringing in a high level of art, music, and story. This is how we try to attain the immersiveness and engagement that we think is critical for plasticity. The skills and the challenges go up as you move through the game. If, you, if we test this on young children and kids, all they really want to do is customize their avatar. So we have that in there as well. Lots of environments so that people play over a long period of time.